Hello and welcome to part 3 of chapter 2 of our fire team series. Previously we worked on our main menu UI, and in this episode we're going to work on our lobby UI. So when the player goes in, they can see the connected players and go into a game. So let's get started. So now we have the player connected window, we can now work on our game mode to actually get the players in here. So let's go ahead and look at our lobby game mode. We had that in here. There we go. And in here, we can clear this off here. And in its place, we're going to have a login system. So we're going to have login, and you'll see on post login. This event fires whenever a new player successfully logs in and joins the session. Okay, so when a new player comes in, it's going to come through and come through at this pin here. We then want to make sure we've got it set as a lobby controller. We need access to certain information the lobby controller has. So on new player here, we're going to drag this out and cast to our lobby controller. Okay. When we've got that, we're going to add this to an array of lobby controllers. So let's just add a variable or connected layers. And we're going to call that one for the lobby controllers and be an array and you drag that out get and then add to it so if someone joins we've got a record of all the people who have joined the game on the game mode we then want to take that information and get hold of the play information that's assigned to the lobby controller so let's go over to the lobby controller and put that in there don't have that there hold on there we are. And in here, we're going to have the player info as a variable. Player info. It'd be the type of our struct we made last time. Info player struct. And we hit compile. Okay. We then want to go back to our lobby game mode. And in there, we're going to tell our lobby controller here to get hold of its or sorry set its player information accordingly so set player info and we're going to set that in the add here the player information here is going to come from our uh, us creating what information we want to set up about the player so we're going to drag this out and do make and we need the player name now the player name is really simple to get all we have to do is drag from the new player or, or the lobby controller, whichever one you want to do. Drag this from here, and you want to get the player state that's been assigned to it. So a state is uh, assigned to all player controllers, and it keeps track of information about the individual players, like things like score and etc. So in player state, one of the things we keep track of is their name. So we get player name. And if depending on what platform you're on, if you're on Steam, for example, it'll get return their Steam name. Um, so we'll pl have that and we're going to plug that into our player name there okay right next we are going to um to the right of this um we're going to add this to another array of player informations so we can make another variable for player connected player info and that's going to be an array of F player infos. In and do add. Okay. Right, so once you've added all the players, you've got the information from the players, you then need to tell to update all of our stuff, including the player connected list on our lobby screen. So we're going to take the connected players array and in there we're going to do a for each loop and inside this for each loop we're going to simply just tell it to update the player list in our lobby uh, system so the way we need to do that is get hold of our HUD class that is associated to our lobby so if we go to lobby controller the HUD class actually is part of this so on the event graph and begin play I can get the HUD and I can cast that to our lobby HUD. 
And part of that HUD is I want to return the connected players information from there. So I can update the player list um, as I see fit. So let's go into our um, Uh, we want to go into the lobby card class. That's what I'm looking for. Lobby card. Okay. And on the event graph in here, we're going to go on template and we're going to do create widget. And I'm going to choose our lobby interface. And we're going to provide that to a variable. And call it lobby screen. And we're going to add that to viewport. I then want to make another event in here. And this event is going to handle the up updating of our player, uh, player menu. I'm going to go back to our lobby controller and take the as lobby HUD here and promote to a variable so we've got the lobby HUD class. Okay, and now we've got now we've got that reference to the lobby HUD. That means we also have access to the lobby screen here. So I either want to make oh, my lobby screen to, take, to have a function to update and re refresh the player connected list. So let's go into our lobby menu interface and we're going to go to graph here and create a custom event to update player list and this is going to ask for the connected players information so I need to have inputs here for connected players and that is going to be f player info array and that and this array here, we're going to have to pass through into our sub widget for the players connected but on the lobby play screen. So let's go into there, I'm going to drag out the lobby play screen. In there, I'm going to get player, and you'll see lobby players connected. Okay, so let's now tell our lobby's player connected here to have a function to update itself. So let's go to lobby players connected. And we've already got the update player list, so let's put that into our interface here. So update player list, and there you go. So we just need to call this event here and pass through the connected players from the lobby controller. So then back on our lobby controller here, we're going to create another custom event in here, and this is going to be called update player list. And this is going to take an input as well for the connected, uh, yeah, connected player info. And oh, whoops, put it in the wrong place. There we go. Connected player info, and that'll be the f player info set to as an array. Okay, so we're going to promote that to a variable on here. There we go. And then we're going to tell our lobby menu to update. So if I drag out my lobby HUD, then from there, I'm going to do lobby screen. And our lobby screen is our lobby menu interface here. And I've got this function to update player list. So let's call that on our controller here update player list you can see now you can plug in the player information across that's going to call this over on our lobby menu interface oh that now clear that issue um menu interface and it will then go through and update the players connected list that information so let's go back now to our game mode and on the game mode here we're going to tell our for each loop to simply go and Drag out from here to update player list. And this is going to require the array. Yeah. Okay, so when we've finished with that, we can then test all of this out. Make sure you save everything and then we'll go and push play. 
go to the host match and join the lobby. Now you notice here the player collectors list is still empty. It should at least show me. And the reason why it's not showing me is because there's going to be an error. And we've got some errors here. As, to, as I suspected. So when you access none on the lobby HUD, what that means is if we go to the uh, lobby controller here, this event begin play is what's setting the lobby HUD here. But our update playlist is needing the update uh, as lobby HUD. This is happening before this has a chance to fire. So what we need to do is delay this bit happening for a little bit. So we're going to go into our update playlist. A little delay in here. 2.2 will be just fine. Let's now test that out. Wait. Wrist match. And then you can see my desktop name has now appeared in the list. I got a little bit, but that's fine. That's something we can tweak and adjust as we later on. But the main thing is, is we've got our player here ready to go. And then any other player that joins the session, they will also rock up with their own player connected list here. So to demonstrate this working, if I go into my uh, uh, system for our main game instance here, and I'm going to turn on use LAN for now. Please. And we're going to go back to our game here, and we're going to do launching two players, players listen server. And we do new editor windows. Okay, so we've got two editor windows here. We've got a server view, and we've also got a client view. We go to the server view, hit host match. Should see that come up there. Why has it done that again? Damn bug. Now, sometimes when you do this, you'll get this up bug come up. So when you hit host on one screen, you'll get taken to the level on this screen. And the reason why that happens is because the game is essentially is restarting and the default map it's been told to start as is the main game mode here. So what I need to do is change that in the project settings. So we go to project settings, go to maps and modes, and we're going to change the editor startup map and game default map to both be the main menu. Now when I play it, if I hit host match on this screen, nothing would happen on this screen yet and go to quick match and it will find and join the other screen okay so there you go you can see we've got our two players connected on our server view here but our client view is still empty here now why is that the case well the reason being is because we haven't yet made our event replicated so let's go into our menus lobby controller and go into update playlist we want all of our players to update their playlist, not just the host. So we're going to click on this and change that to uh, run on owning client. The server has access to all of the controllers, where the clients only have access to their own one. So in here we want to replicate this to all the owning clients to reflect that. Now if I push play, go host match, join there, and I'll go to quick match. Wait for it to connect. And when it does, I should see both our screens now reflect two names. Okay. And same we go for three, four, five, whatever my players you want, you also see them all the day. And that brings us to the end of this part. We've now got a player list appearing on our screen for both the server and the clients, allowing us to see who has joined our session. In the next episode, we're going to go through the process of creating the mode selection tool. I need to switch between different game modes via a simple button click. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch all my parts early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time. You better get ready to race to the top. I'm ready to do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field. It's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop.